did have already last year we started our kind of a series of three game jams for this year with low code uh, game jam and that approach with working with tools that you don't necessarily have to program anything is available also you can do it in any jam basically and the one that we will start reviewing first before we go to the new game jam is called amazing mm -hmm. ai jam yes it was involved about using ai maybe even generative ais as for inspiration uh, or inviting this ai fellow into your teammate even working collaboratively with ai but we also encourage people not to uh, just rely on ai but obviously use it for inspirations for supplementary in adding that more value to their game. So that was yeah. our general uh, theme of that jam. Yeah. And uh, we had also a theme layer to it. So the theme theme was a scream. So scream. People, <laughs> people could use that in one way or another. So 12 games were submitted. And uh, we're going to invite our mentors to talk about these games, right? Yes. First. So uh, as a kind of a local person, <laughs> Yes. Is Arvi Daikari here? Welcome oh. to the stage. Welcome to the stage. Here, grab your seat. <laughs> Yay! Wow. And again, we have hybrid setting, so we have local mentor right in stage with us, as and well as online. those who are in online. And so in online, we have Evi and Tarja, as well as Samuli. So I don't know if you can hear us. Okay, I don't think we get the I, view. I, I can't hear them, though. Can you say uh, something? Can you hear us? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, Evi is, Evi is there. there. Hey. Tarja is there, Tarja and then we have Samuli's voice, but not not, not a picture. Oh. Samuli has been replaced by a chat message. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome I guess, Samuli, if, you if you're there, <laughs> Samuli is in, in Japan right now, but if you're there, can you hear us? So we'll just, we'll go through about seven games of, of uh, kind of favorites of our mentor team. They are not like winners or anything. They're just no. somehow interesting in one way or another our mentors have picked for, for discussion. So we'll start with sheet music. And I think Tarja was the one that at least has been highlighting this as one of the favorites. So this was created by a team of one, two, three, four, five people. And yeah. the AI was used for level design. Yeah, and can we have that on the screen as well? Um, they mentioned so it's a Korean team. So mm -hmm. it's a team of South Korean, and they wrote their roles in Korean. So let's see. There's a team leader, programmer, art team lead, character, animation, level design, and their name is mostly written in Korean. But yeah, they made the game called Sheet Music. It's yeah. called it's Sheet Two E, not I. Yeah, and we can see footage of, there the, of the game there. So there is a character moving, and then there's some kind of audio uh, loops. But Tarja, you can, you can start already chatting about this. Like, what was the, the reasons why you picked this? Yeah, like, well, I must admit at the start that I first, like, I struggled with maybe 10 or 15 minutes to understand what should I do, or, like, not what should I do, but where should I press? But that's just my own stupidity, basically, because I didn't read the instructions that were offered on each I.O. So it took me a bit to kind of, like, figure out how to move uh, and how to grab those instruments you can grab. And I absolutely love the character. It's really simple, but it's so cute. And I guess it's so cute because it is so simple. I've been playing a lot of like huge AAA titles lately, and this was so refreshing somehow. And the like the mechanics, how you can use the power of the instrument you pick up, was something really fun. I like there was some little bugs that I got stuck, for example, between some blocks and so on. But restarting the game fixed that. But it's always in game jams. There's some kind of uh, bugs and yeah, things yeah. that mm -hmm. can polish so well. I liked how, yeah. Yeah. I liked how the yeah. team was describing that the instruments are kind of screaming themselves. So that was the interpretation. Of yeah. The yeah. Yeah, and I felt it in my core somehow when I was playing this. Like I, I didn't try. Like the it's I/O description says that you could use your voice as well, like with, with microphone. But I 
couldn't figure out how to do that, like how that would have been possible. So I played only with key, keys, the keyboard. But I kind of wanted to make the sound when I was playing, because it's <laughs> somehow so nicely visualized in the game itself. Yeah. But yeah, it's kind of really simple, like the um, environment and character and all are simple, but the game mechanic is so... I think it's really unique. Mm. I really liked this one. Yeah. Congratulations for the team, by the way, work. for this. And it's very cute. Yep. So it follows the the words scream by making the character scream, but mm -hmm. in a very cute manner. Mm -hmm. So that's what it was. And there's another character in the backstage over there. Yeah. That's really impressively kind of complicated. Like this seems like a full game idea already. And I also really like the cuteness of the style. Yeah. Well done and congratulations for the team. We're going to move to the next one. Yes. So this is called Color, uh, Color Marble. Color Marble. And uh, Arve, you could start chatting about this. Yeah. So the idea is that it's one of those marble mazes where you tilt the board to move a marble to the goal and uh, it had multiple levels and I think the AI part was that the level designs were art made by AI and uh, for me the really nice thing was that the game kind of generates uh, kind of an uneven terrain based on the art used for the level so for example this level shown here has these col color gradients which create really nice slopes because I think the color codes are used as the kind of cue for the algorithm to decide how high or low a bump is. And I think that in this game, the general concept of being able to draw or paint a painting and use it as a level for a mar marble maze is really was really cool. Some of the levels used were maybe a little bit too uh, Kind of, th there were maybe a little bit too many colors and such, so the maze you ended up with wasn't as interesting as it could have been. But I think this first level, especially, kind of showcases the idea very well with those slopes and such. So if the bumps were higher and there was kind of more handcraftedness to it, I could see this idea working really well. Mm -hmm. hmm. I like it. It's, it's an interesting way to turn the game, kind of the images into. Puzzle, mm -hmm. sort of like. And it this was a one person team uh, by Quan Quan Bach. Bach. Yay! Oh, yay! Yay! Congratulations. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations again. 12 hour work, not so, not so big. Yeah. This was made in a day. Okay. Yeah. This was made in a day, so I don't. That's why the levels aren't handcrafted, by the way. <laughs> I, don't, I just don't have the time to do right. it. Right. <laughs> but I, I think it's also really nice in many games if, like, if a a released game was made out of this and people would be able to submit their own level images to turn into levels. Something like that is always a lot of fun as a player where it's kind of like, I drew my own level in paint and now I can play it actually. It's inspiring. Hmm. Have their relative faces somehow playable or something like that. I don't know why that popped into my mind. <laughs> but congratulations, that was a nice project. Thank you. All right, so the next, the next project one. is called Vis Cream. Uh, and if we have Samuli's voice somehow magically appearing now, we would start. Hello. Oh, yes, Yay. yes, there you, go. Hello. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about the lack of, lack of uh, video. I don't have a webcam on my laptop. They haven't invented uh, the video yet in Japan. No, they have not. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm here sitting warm in Okotatsu. Anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah. this uh, vis, vis Cream, I, I really loved loved this uh, implementation of the of the scream team in this game because it was very literally the painting and it was the method that you played the game with so you be uh, you were having to match your volume of your own voice to the volume of uh, of an audio of the game that is playing in the background and there you can see the 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 green green uh, dot is the is the player's audio and the blue is the game's audio and the longer you play the game the art slowly transforms into like more and more manic manic versions of the classic painting uh, I, I i really love the game i don't know if my neighbors loved me uh, playing the game <laughs> yeah i have to say that my cats were terrified when i was playing this because i tried different like pitches and different sounds 
and so on. So they didn't really like it. But yeah, I loved it as well. Did they try to attack you and kind of shut your mouth or something? <laughs> I think they tried to join me somehow, or I'm not sure if they thought that I was like threat or somehow doing something interesting. <laughs> okay. So it's a good game for cats as well, I guess. Um, and yeah, also generally, yeah, means, if yeah. there's like a, somebody's like singing a music in a gameplay demo video, I usually get nervous. But then this jammer's uh, video submitted in a gameplay, we're like, you have a very nice voice. I yeah, yeah, say. Yeah. So yeah, plus it's one on that. Yeah. It's also, almost like a mantra. Yeah, and this also looks like a legitimately horrifying in a way, the art, how it transforms. So the screen was also included in terms of like a scream of horror, I feel. Yeah. At least for me, this looks scary. Human despair that it's yeah. in the original art piece. So. I think this was the scariest game I also played, even though it wasn't the horror game in sense. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, um, we'll move to the next one, uh, which is Endless Patience. And we have Evi to uh, start commenting on this. So let's hear yeah. what Evi has to say. Yes, uh, this game, immediately when I played it, I was reminded of the eternal classic Quop, so Q-W-O-P, if anyone's ever played it. If you haven't, you need to go online and see it. Uh, and also kind of like the game that spawned from it, was it um, uh, Get Over It With? Yeah. And then it was the developer's Bennett name. Bennett Foddy. Bennett yeah. Foddy, yeah. Yeah, Bennett Foddy. Yeah, so this reminded me very much of that. And and I think the kind of like presentation and music were already really good uh, for a jam game. They were clear and kind of like you know got me in the mood. And I did like I did like the uh, kind of like the mechanics, even though I had a little bit of difficulties with them. So I think uh, with a little bit of polish, uh, there are already plenty of legs on this game. <laughs> yes, it's a, I especially like the how the art was very minimalistic, but it conveyed what it needed to con convey really well. Uh, especially I like the environmental Ouch. art because uh, mountain sides are beautiful in my opinion. So the cliff face you climb and the background work really well. Yeah, and the screen was when you fall down, you can see it on the kind of a red of the screen. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that was also an interesting way of interpreting the theme itself. And this was a team of uh, three people. And they were, uh, I think that they, they, they say that they tested a lot of tools, but they didn't kind of end up using all of the AI tools that, but I, I guess this was a perfect jam to test out different kinds of approaches mm -hmm. and then see if that works for your By the game. way, what was the development team for the previous game? Oh yeah, I, I guess I forgot to tell that. So that was a one, one, one person, person team, solo jam. Ahmad Erfani Yahambak, okay. maybe? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that was a 40, 42 hour uh, uh, process, and this is a 61 hour process, so already quite a lot of hours, but maybe put together be with between the makers. So one of the developers was doing six hours, one 15, and one 40. Yeah. So it sounds very kind of regular. We had also a lot of team mention that they tried out different type of AI throughout this jam. Yeah. They may end up using them, may not, but it was a good exercise exploring uh, uh, other tools out there. Yeah. So let's move to the next one, which is called Drunk and Dead. Dead. One person team again. And I guess that was picked at least by Arvi. Yeah. So this was a game that had a a uh, very kind of classic concept in that you are uh, a bartender and you get guests who ask for drinks. And uh, the joke joke was kind of that the guests you get or customers you get are zombies and they order zombie drinks. And they also make little quips when you serve them. Uh, I think the game, while the idea was kind of classic and uh, reminded me there was a game released last year where you're hitchhiking and you can get into a mini game of doing the same. Uh, the humor and in general the kind of look of the game worked really well where you have this kind of full, fully furnished bar and uh, you have the different, you have the cash register, you have the yuka box, you have the bottles and such. So in general I feel that the game 
maybe shined in terms of its uh, atmosphere and mm -hmm. aesthetic. Uh, and also, I like that in these kinds of mini games, usually the uh, the yeah, there's kind of like a part of the game is that it's very difficult to find all the bottles and you have to kind of scramble to find the correct bottles for yeah, the, the correct drinks. Now, and I actually kind of like that this didn't go for that. They gave you a very simple menu for mixing the drinks, so it kind of went to a different direction and I appreciated the change of pace. And, and you can, the, the, um, uh, this talk uh, and the background, it was generated by Eleven Labs, text-to-speech. Mm -hmm. so, so you can hear that the in, in the, the this outbreak. case, you can hear already it's how AI tools can breath. improve, Definitely for instance, the quality of the jam games. You don't have to do the voice acting for all. Although I'm not sure if there is yet an AI that can create like a zombie, zombie voices, <laughs> where like a raspy... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about I'm that. sure there is, but must, I haven't seen must one. Must be. That must be like one of the first ideas <laughs> that comes to the mind of yeah. the game developers. But I yeah, Evi and Arya, did you have uh, Tarja, Did you have something to add to to this? Can I get a last breath? <laughs> hey boy, can play some jazz, please. Yeah, it's like um, really love the concept uh, of kind of like mixing a zombie game with uh, kind of like you know. Kind of like a bar management serving game, uh, just that that creativity. Yeah. So I, I th there's a this is really a nice atmosphere and nice idea in itself. So yeah. And you shoot the, your customers in the end. Yeah. Uh, Twenty eight hours yeah. of development by one person by for nice. this. And the, we move to the next one. I actually didn't even get to the part where you shoot the customers, so I guess I missed this <laughs> <laughs> the brutal part. Yeah. The the other one is. And I didn't know. Yeah. I, I'm Say sorry. Again. I just I didn't know how to serve the drink, so I ended up shooting the customers, <laughs> and then I had to try again. <laughs> uh, oh, that's but the, the uh, that's gameplay. Yeah, that's a classic way of if I you if you don't know what to do, then you shoot, shoot. the customers. Yeah. Shoot everyone. Yes. Yeah. Shoot everyone. <laughs> right. So the next one is Sentiments and Circuitry uh, by two people, Kai and Ilmari, forty-four hours together, and I guess this was. This was Evie's pick, at least. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because of course, like uh, uh, it's a, it's a narrative-heavy game, so of course uh, I was really, really looking forward to reviewing it. And yeah, I really like the art. Of course, see. turned out really, really well. So I think uh, kind of like uh, I noticed that you used a lot of AI tools for it, and I'm impressed that kind of like you know I. I did initially think that you used that much AI uh, for the art creation, but it seems like a lot of it was AI created. So uh, kudos for that. But to me, the more impressive thing was the use of AI also as a plot point uh, and kind of like, you know, commenting on like a potential future where, you know, people are dating AI characters and how how kind of what kind of stories can come out of that one. So kind of incorporating AI, not just into the tools, but also into the story uh, made me really happy. Yeah, that's there. There's, they have listed chat GPT, novel AI, mid journey, dal E as kind of tools used in this project. And the, and the scream is the, the horror uh, theme for the game. So that's, that's how it is. Mm. Right. So, so I don't know, Salib, did you play it and did you got scared? Because I don't think that there was this kind of scare moment. I, I don't it. think it was like it's, it <laughs> wasn't dark and it's not like a like a dark and even the dr uh, Drunken Dead game was dark and about zombie, which is the game that I really scared <laughs> of. That wasn't scary and this was also not scary. So yeah, whew, relief for me. Relief for, from <laughs> that perspective. Mm -hmm. But yeah, ni nice, nice ones too. And then we have one more game, I guess, and that was. Let's see if this PowerPoint gets it. So that's called uh, the Bluebird. Bluebird. Uh, one person uh, team. And this is a highlighted several one of you, but Daria, I think that you had the best comments for this, so you can start. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just, okay, I, I love this game. And I really, really wish to see how it continues, like what happens after um, the story ends in this one. Like, I really need to know. And, <laughs> and that's kind of like this short version of how I felt playing about this, like playing this game. Like, I really need to, I want to explore further what is going on in this developer's mind. Like, 
it's just something I want everyone to try this game. Mm -hmm. It's some it's somehow like I was feeling really tired and really um, somehow stressed when I started to play this game, but it <laughs> instantly uh, like grabbed my attention totally. Uh, yeah. Like the first thing where you go into that um, vehicle of yours, th that flying brain thing, it was so clever, like how the dialogue there was done and all that. I just, Don't worry. I need you all to play this game. <laughs> It is very wholesome and, and, and very nice color yeah. palette and interesting vehicle to start with. I guess it was like a ceramic something. Ceramic blob. Yeah. yeah. It's, flying. It's, it's like a it's brain almost. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. it looks like brain to me as well. Yeah, I really like the colors as well. It's, uh, it's understandable that making this kind of uh, crisp 2D art, pixel art, is with no nowadays, like um, with modern tools, it can sometimes be actually surprisingly difficult to go for this kind of consistent, consistently sized pixel art, so it's nice to see a game that uses uses that combined with such nice colors. Yeah, and the, and the developer have uh, put in the uh, jam page that the, the secondary meaning of scream was used in this game in a way that the ball went screaming past my head. Mm. So maybe that's the, the vehicle in it, mm. I'm not sure. And there were some uh, AI tools used for inspiration, but they were not so kind of useful for the end game. Mm. So there were some kind of uh, bits like the clouds that were left from the inspirational AI images. And then one hours, uh, 100 hours of work. So I guess this was like the, the, the longest development time for uh, of yeah. all of these projects by Hinman Lantern. But yeah. And I think it definitely shows uh, and kind of like just the little details, like just getting the speech bubbles to originate from the character that's speaking. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, you know, not, not, and kind of like seems like a simple thing to do, but mm. kind of like, you know, it shows the polish and, and the kind of like that all of the fonts are kind of also yeah. pixelated and, and they're still readable. Like that can also be surprisingly hard. Yeah. So like just kudos to all the polish that went into this game. It already looks like something that would be up there yeah. uh, in a Google or Apple Play Store. Yeah, like rendering yeah. text. Yeah, I'd love, yep. like, so, sorry, somebody, go ahead. Somebody. I'd love, yeah, I'd love to echo the, the words of this being amazing. And uh, I think uh, what surprised me is that even though it was like super polished and uh, super nice looking, also the gameplay and the pacing of the abilities that you were getting was also spot on. So mm. it's rare to see in a, in a champ this kind of game that all around was doing everything uh, very nicely in terms of audio, uh, visuals, uh, atmosphere, and also the gameplay and the progression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh, I just wanted to say that rendering text on screen is one of those things that make you tear your hair out if you have to do it yourself. So it's always applaudable when people do it. <laughs> uh, were you going to say something, Tarja? I just want to uh, mention the accessibility of this game because first I thought that it won't be that accessible because it looked, I don't know, it was just like gut feeling. But I was super happy. Like Evi said that even the, like, the text, it's readable. Mm. So, 10 out of 10. Yeah, yeah the details, it's nice. very detailed. And I really like the walking yeah. animation sequence of the character when the, when it hopped out from the ceramic bulb. I was like, oh, that's so cute. Yeah. You know? yeah. Very detailed. For me, nice I, I think that the, the most important thing that is all often lacking, and I want Evie's opinion on this, is that the, when the first texts comes, they are very short, but they're, they have a great pull. So there was like a couple of words, couple of sentences, and you're like all, already interested in what is this? Mm. Uh, there's the discussion between the kind officer. Of a officer. Yeah, officer border control yeah. kind of almost so that was like yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of like, you know, art of uh, uh, storytelling in games, kind of like you want to be succinct uh, because most in most games having kind of like a lot of exposition at the beginning in the form of text, mm. like, you know, only a very, very, very few games can pull that off and maintain that. Mm -hmm. uh, so for most games, kind of like the pithiness, uh, while still conveying the particular emotion and mood and the world of the game is 
is is a very very valuable skill uh yeah. so kind of like once again kudos to bluebird team uh bluebird person uh for pulling this off it's, yeah. it's a, a kind of interesting how the game is this very cute and colorful colorful looking thing and that the first thing you have is this kind of bureaucracy trying to get to the city <laughs> and it's it's definitely very effective in telling you okay this game it's not going to be something like kirby where it's just like cutesy kind of meaningless wondering not that that's that's also cool but it's also interesting from a narrative mm. viewpoint that okay this is going somewhere different maybe yeah like the contradiction between the elements that mm -hmm. gives you a certain like good uh yeah, starting point. story was actually the story was actually really deep <laughs> okay yeah. like it made me think a lot of stuff mm -hmm. I think we're but doing a lot of appraisal for another. this it's game, so <laughs> as Tarja was saying, everybody should play this and try it out themselves. Mm -hmm. so it's a very fantastic game. Um, so that was all of the games themselves, and I want to thank all the jammers, but I would like to also ask from our uh, mentors that overall this topic of AI tools and, and game jamming, how do you think about after this this game jam that where we perhaps heading for, at least in game jams? Uh, for me, at least, it kind of, uh, it seemed based on this that the greatest value generally for from the AI tools was maybe more for uh, inspiration. And that kind of, that was also kind of how I felt beforehand. And it was nice to see that some of the teams could find that kind of utility in them in that, wasn't necessary, or necessarily it wasn't kind of needed that they will be used as a kind of a central core mechanic in the programming itself, but instead they could be used as kind of like, what kind of ideas can I get from mm, this mm, thing? Mm. Yeah, others? Yeah, on the same line. So especially seeing, seeing the talk about how to use AI to help like writing work that it can give you these kind of like prompts and inspiration or help you find a particular Kind of like voice uh, and kind of like you know help help the uh, kind of the AI can help you generate more stuff if you've kind of like you know already find a particular style that you're going for. So kind of like I find that really really interesting because sometimes even though ideas are plenty, like really inspiring and unique ideas are sometimes hard to come by. So and because AI you know can really think outside the kind of human box, uh, I think its value comes in like allowing us to kind of like create this really, really new and inspiring prompts. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. Tario, how do you feel about after this gem? I'm definitely more positive about using AI tools uh, with games because I was a bit skeptic, to be completely honest, and I was a bit afraid that what if what if I see something that's that feels like I don't know. Well, you all know how controversial topic AI mm -hmm. has been lately. But I was really positively surprised. And as others said, um, using AI as inspiration and kind of to help you to boost your own imagination, it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it's still there is a place in the human process of of these kind of tools, mm -hmm. but uh, the humans will cr give the kind of the the content in the end. How about Samuli? Are you still there? Yes. So I I, I echo the echo the same words. So I I would think as a as a as a developer, I'm more like a curator of the of the things that have been generated, and then doing the final decisions on what to, what to actually do with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that's the, the you, you want to add something out? I just kind of as an aside, I've been watching on Twitch. Uh, there has been a, a kind of a channel that has been broadcasting uh, Simpsons episodes made with oh, yeah. by feeding chat GPT kind of mm. rough forms of the script. And then the mm. characters uh, using text to speech act out these scenes, but with the chat GPT kind of deciding new direction f to which they go. And it's been surprisingly funny and surprisingly engrossing because it's kind of like, <laughs> especially if you know the scene beforehand that they are kind of uh, remaking, you know how it goes normally. But then because the JetGPT just, well, it does its 
thing generates stuff. It doesn't really know what kind of plot points it should stick on, and that's kind of the point. And also the text-to-speech can sometimes bug out and make really odd noises, or mm. things can go in odd directions. It's kind of exciting to see what happens next. Like the, the scene has a fire burst out, and the character makes up excuses for, no, no, there is no fire, it's just something else. And then the chat GPT figures out like different false explanations of like no no it's it's leprechauns so there's just a centaur in the room there's no fire it's it's very I found that like uh, something that I would like to try myself kind of like could I use procedural generation or text to speech to create this kind of surprising dialogues and I feel that this kind of thinking outside of the human box this kind of surprise is feels inspiring inspiring to me in a way like it's it's funny in a way that would be difficult to do or for, would easily feel forced if made by human hand it's difficult to write this kind of like absurd humor and then ai feels absurd by default because there is no human kind of curating the output mm. in the same way maybe they will develop it further and they, they kind of spoil this weirdness of the AI, that's what I'm mainly <laughs> worried about. Yeah, yeah, like if, get, if it gets too good, then it <laughs> yeah. will get too boring. Yeah. It's uh, the, the ways it breaks and doesn't work, yeah. like when the text-to-speech suddenly says out like a swear word, mm. uh, even though it's supposed never to say swear words, it's, mm. it's funny or surprising in a way that yeah. you don't really expect. <laughs> so I guess, yeah, oh, we got the black screen and, and here. One, one more kind of like the the especially in terms of kind of like uh, writing and storytelling, the kind of curse of the blank page. You, you can also use AI just to create that first draft. Like, you know what the, you know, story is about, but creating that first draft is always the worst. It's kind of like for a lot of people easier to edit once you've kind of like made that first, you know, just vomit the words on the page mm -hmm. pass. And sometimes kind of like, you know, combining the AI creating you the first pass and as, as mentioned uh, that, you know, it can create these surprising, absurdist situations that might kind of like, you know, inspire you to take mm -hmm. to new places. But that also, even if it's not absurd, even if it was predictable, but by having someone else doing that first pass, which is the hardest, uh, like, I think I can see like immense value um, for a lot of writers there. Yeah, the AI gives you the prompt, like, it was a dark and stormy night. And oh, yes, I'm very inspiring. <laughs> Well, well, we'll see what the future is, but game gems are great places to try these out and form your own opinion, what you want to do with AI tools in the future and what kind of future you want to impact for. Uh, we want to thank our mentors for participating into, into giving feedback and uh, playing the games and giving the comments for the each pages. Thank you. It was fantastic to have you here, Arvi, Samuli, uh, Evi and Tarja. So thank you for this. Thank you very much. Thank you. And also Thanks thank for you, having you. Jammers. Yes. And congratulations thank you. again for all the jammers. We're going to move to the next jam.